Uh, Michael, as you know, uh, I'm not a golfer, but I do know that it's all about putting together the perfect foursome. And uh, we about to four box this thing on here, our brother from another with a couple of brothers that we had the pleasure to meet while we were at the American Century Championship in Tahoe last week. Will Lowry and Doug Smith. Yep. Uh, they have uh, their own podcast together. There are a couple of golf pros who come together uh, for the Beyond the Fairway podcast on, on NBC Sports. And now we get to team up with them. We, we, we chopped it up in Tahoe. Apparently, all of us have an aversion to sunscreen, so we've all been peeling for the last few days. Crazy. Oh. Here we are a week later getting Ooh. a chance uh, to talk to these brothers uh, and kick it with them, talk about the Open, uh, which is obviously underway. Lots to talk about there. But, man, I just want to start with the two of y'all. I mean, it was, it was really great to connect with y'all out there. We, we went to American Century uh, in Tahoe, and, um, and obviously – the, the a lot of celebrities out there, a lot of a lot of famous athletes, entertainers or whatever. But I'm, I, I mean this, I'm, no BS. It was really good to make new friends, uh, even though we all in the same family anyway. In, in, Appreciate you, absolutely, umbrella. So, absolutely. yeah. So I love to start well with uh, with just you know just how you guys came together. Michael and I are very fond of our story and our relationship. <laughs> well, Will, Will, and then Doug, tell us how y'all came together and decided that y'all need to do this thing. Uh, called the Beyond the Fairway podcast. Well, um, well, I'm gonna let Doug uh, explain how we came together because it's quite funny <laughs> when he explains it. But uh, how the podcast, you know, uh, became in, come to fruition that was birth was, um, you know, I got a phone call from um, Molly Solomon, executive producer for NBC, and she asked a question like, "Will, how can we get you know more African Americans in the game of golf? How get, how can we become more engaging?" Yeah. And the thing was is that. I'm like Molly. Let's just get more black people on the lineup talking about golf. And you know, I, I, you know, you and I had a conversation about uh, you know coming up originating ideas, et cetera, and for Dutch's standpoint. But one of my ideas was having a podcast along with others. Um, let's just have a conversation, like a, a, a somewhat of a, a Breakfast Club style of golf, black content. And there's not many African Americans on on the lineup that uh that uh no. the nbc golf lineup so uh that's kind of how where we are called doug I'm like bro uh you are in the podcast space i know nothing about journalism i don't know how to speak into a microphone just yet but uh <laughs> will you come on this journey with me and let's go and figure this thing out and uh i'll let yeah. doug tell you how we met man so it's funny when he tells it <laughs> all right so you know we got to be a little little tactful will we in here peacock family but mike and mike let me say what's happening to y'all brothers first before we get to that man i ain't got to speak yet let me say what's good but uh will and i we, hey, we don't have to be tactful by the way you don't have all to be right, tactful we'll, okay all right cool we're we gonna, we gonna throw go that ahead, out the window talk. then all right we'll, th yeah. we'll throw that out the window so me and mel we and will met at a golf course in the hood right for those that don't know what i'm talking about we met in la at chester washington what a lot of people don't know about chester washington is it also serves as a community center so will and i were paired randomly together i was like who the hell is this guy with dreads playing golf backwards and upside down but after 18 holes we forged a relationship <laughs> i was on my own out in la will was on his own so we was like yo you want to go to some of these you know different uh spots in the city hit it together he was like cool let's roll so we leave the golf course, and little did we know there's a home-going celebration at the course for a fallen Crip. That's a true story. I cannot make this up. So a member of the Crips had fallen. They was having a home-going celebration at the golf course that we was playing at. So between the golf course driveway and then getting back to Western Parkway there, just off of El Segundo, it's like 300 yards, all right? So Will and I get into this little Ford Fusion that was blue, and we – try to traverse through this sea of crips i'm telling you it's about 300 crips and i told will i was i was i was a little nervous because it was like one of those documentary moments where you you've seen this on tv but i'm from kentucky he from charlotte so we ain't ever seen this actually live so brothers out there with french <laughs> braids dicky outfits one button super cliche i'm talking baby boy cliche right so we we yeah, chilling yeah. right and, and i was like will don't do nothing dog just just look straight and we'll get through this sea of crips bro it's 300 yards took us 10 minutes to get to the street to the stoplight and you should have seen how brave we got as soon as we made it through we was like man we would have whooped them boys up man they ain't one of us bitch. <laughs> in the building kentucky out here nah and it was but after that i mean will likes to tell people we almost died together but no nah, but we we actually we we had a moment <laughs> it all started with will trying to holler at a gang member's girlfriend and that's where that's where the amb ambiguity oh, started. 
Yeah, Will, man. Wait, this is in that same walk? Yeah, same, so we had to get so, to the car. So, so what happened was we were in the parking lot and I saw, you know, these beautiful ladies walk by. A little different from my taste, but I was in LA. I was willing to explore, you know. And so uh, the, the one of the guys uh, said, hey, man, do not holler at one of those girls because they belong to a gang member. And I'm like, man, the gang member ain't here. I mean, not right now. And That's before you, you know it, <laughs> but before you know it, when I never, for some reason, I never looked to the left of me. I looked to the left, up the hills, see a blue. But one thing that was so vulnerable uh, that for Doug and I, we, we touched the space of being vulnerable together because we were so scared. I don't care how Doug <laughs> said it, Doug was scared. When we were going through that sea of blue, we were in the car with the windows rolled up. And he said, don't say nothing. He whispered to <laughs> So, so once, like I said, we were both scared. We were whispering <laughs> to one another. And once we got to the end of the, the uh, driveway and we realized we came out unscathed, we, we felt like we reached another level in our friendship of knowing each other for 10 years. <laughs> That's good uh, it, this, is, this is great. And I'm, I'm sure there are, some, there are some moments on the podcast where you guys are just being yourselves because you do that very naturally. And then at maybe in the moment, or you look back after and you say, you know what, we said something today. We really, oh, we went somewhere. Can you think of a, a, a moment or two like that where either you guys realize it or somebody came to you and said, I heard your podcast. And when you talked about this, that really helped me. Uh, well, first thing I, that comes I, to mind for me, uh, I'll take it real, real quick is, yeah. is having a, we did an episode with Sean Foley, uh, you know, Cameron Champ's current coach. Uh, used to coach Tiger Woods back in the day uh, after Butch or Haney days. And, you know, we, the goal of our show is to kind of, you know, bridge this gap, right. To, to have these, you know, awkward conversations, unique conversations, things that actually people talk about during golf. Right. And, and not be so score scoreboard focused with, you know, with all the Brandel Chambly isms is how we say it. And, you know, Sean Foley is, is, is one of the more woke people, um, that I've ever been around. You know, he went to an HBCU in Tennessee State. He's Canadian. So he kind of looks at this racial dynamic from a very unique perspective, being a part of it, but yet also looking from the outside of it. And he's, he made, I'm paraphrasing, a, a statement that until, until, until white people start getting treated like black folk by the police and in these, you know, varying circumstances, they're not going to do anything about the status quo currently. And to hear that from a white dude uh, was super impactful and super powerful to me because, you know, in my opinion, it's true. But, you know, sometimes you can't always speak purpose to power. And, and when Foley said it, man, it just hit different. There's no other way to describe it. Yeah, he, he had me want to go find a dashiki collar shirt. It was, it was, <laughs> it was very powerful. It was very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I got to um, put up with y'all. This is, this is, this is it. You know, I, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was looking for, all I'm kind telling of you, like headbands, everything. Well, and it's, again, it was just so funny. Cause I mean, like Mike and Mike and I were already fish out of water, you know, on the golf course in Tahoe. Last, oh we, we knew we would see a lot of, you know, celebrities, former athletes. We thought we'd be the only black, black, black dude tandem. You know, holding it down podcast, and y'all right behind us. Like I'm like, oh, who are these cats? The Beyond the Fairway podcast. Okay, now I got a new podcast, and you guys were nice enough to have have me on while I was out there. Uh, yeah, we, we sorry about that, together. Mike. By the way, yeah, we have Mike bring Mike on. Hey, hey, you know, <laughs> let me just point out, Will and Doug. The show's called I mean, Brother from choice. Another. Not not. It's not called Solo Brother. It's not called Solo Brother. So I, just, I you know, look, I mean, this is all. This has all been nice. This has been nice. It's been nice. Like we're all having like a oh, nice fight. Hey, you the man. No, you the man. Podcast. You, Michael, you, you the man. You the man. We download their podcast. So we only yeah. had one director no, no. chair. It's, we only okay. had one extra. That's, that's what it was. Right. That's what you it was. You lost the musical chair. I went over you, there. You lost the coin flip. I, w I want to tell people. I want to tell people what happened, because I, you know, both Doug and Will said, "Hey, y'all come over. Y'all, both of y'all come over," and then. uh I'm gonna be real here, okay? I'm gonna be real. So the brothers asked us to come over, brothers to brothers. And then I got over there, I, I just heard a white dude say, Oh, we ain't got a chair for you. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> or Mike. Or Mike. We only had three. Hey, but I tell you this though, it felt I felt bad. I felt bad. I felt bad Don't. as a as a whole. But it felt good because 
we saw uh, uh, was more brothers out there. And it, it was like, it was like looking at your neighbor. You know how like you, you see, you're in a, neighbor, uh, a neighborhood full of white people and you got maybe one black neighbor or two in the area. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. me and Doug whispered to and one another. With the... we, we like, yo, we, we found somebody. Then we hit him with the, what's up with you? Yeah. All right, cool. Right. Your grass it came back, too. and it right. came when it when it came, it came back, back. That's when it was love. Immediately, it came, it came back genuine, Mike. So that's what made me. That's like, man, we got to get them on. We got to go no talk doubt. to them. So that right there was was no huge doubt. for us. I mean, we all but, burned together. But you guys like, you know, know what I'm saying? Hey, oh my God, <laughs> totally, totally. So, but you guys know, you know, I, I'm I'm a casual golf fan uh, at best. So, you know, I, I look at the leaderboard, you know, uh, for the for the British Open, uh, the Open. I, I, you know, I, I see, you know, Louis Ustays and I see Jordan Spieth, uh, you know, went for 300 a day, uh, you know, had a great first round. I know he's comfortable at the British Open. I know he's trying to go for number four, major number four, first since 2017. Uh, but I love to just know if you guys could each take a storyline that has your attention that even the casual fan, you know, maybe it's Bryson DeChambeau versus his driver. I don't know. But, you know, what what storylines have your attention that the casual fan could connect with over the remaining couple of days of the Open? Man, all, all that is golf. This golf beef between Bryson DeChambeau and Brooks Kepka is so it, – it, it creates capital. Now, whatever type of capital you think it belongs in, it creates capital. Because when you see these guys going at it, I, I think it comes to a standpoint to where – I don't think that golfer cares about the golf, but it's about who's talking the most junk. Who can I, I don't know if I curse, but who's talking the most ish, and we can figure out who I want to attach myself to, who I can closely identify with. And that right there is, and I hope, I think right now they're trying to get it to the point to where the masses, where everybody somehow, they they somehow connect and play in a in a tournament together based off their score. I hope they never play in a tournament together right now because I want them to keep this back and forth going as long as possible because right now it's bringing more eyeballs to the game i'm getting phone calls from guys i used to hoop with in high school like man who yeah. is who is brooke, brooke his name brooks i'm like yeah man he's <laughs> like man i like this i like this bryson brooke dechambeau guy i said those are two different people so that right there is the, key, <laughs> the whole thing man so i hope i hope this golf beef keeps going and i i, I mean i don't want to go to fisticuffs but I wouldn't mind seeing a little little drama back in the eye, golf locker room a little bit. Yeah, see, I think I think that's understated though, right? Like, look, you guys, basketball, baseball, football, we celebrate the trash talkers. We celebrate the Isaiah Thomases and the Michael Jordans, you know. But in golf, you know, you got to be so quiet, so prim and proper, shirt tucked in, wearing pants. I like this beef. I like I like the fact that Brooks Kepka in an interview actually took a shot at Bryson and say, "Hey, I love my driver." Like, you know, with all the Bryson, uh, Bryson <laughs> Cobra beef that happened yesterday with him saying his driver sucked. I love Brooks coming out and being like, oh, my driver was amazing. Like, I love the jabs. I think it's as unique as it is. I think it's good for the game. And it's going to bring some of those rivals. I mean, we all love a good rival. We love Ohio State, Michigan, Kentucky, Louisville, Duke, Carolina. We love those matchups. And I think now we're trying to see some of that in golf. And with all this betting and, 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 you know, trying to win money through the game of golf and fantasy leagues. I think this is something that kind of bodes well for the success of some of the, you know, these betting houses, I think it's here to stay and I hope it stays. All right. Well, uh, well speaking of which, hit you real guys quick, with... uh, before, before we let y'all go, oh, go, ahead, go ahead, Mike. before we let y'all go, I was going to speak. You mentioned betting speaking like, so each of y'all, who's your, who's your, who would you bet on to win this thing? Who, who you got, who you got oh. taking the open? Uh, I got to remix. With, I got to remix my stuff, man. It, I'm, I'm going. With, I'm going. With, um, <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> I'm going with probably Louis Ustazen, man. I know it sounds like a, a cliche guy, but you know, because he's on top right now. But he was already my. He was already my pick because I mean, he had a great U.S. Okay. Open. Finish. He was leading the first round of the U.S. Open uh, this year. He's always been around the top. He's not. He's not unfamiliar with being on top of the leaderboard. I just think that uh, this could be the year that. Um, that he, he might crack he might crack the, the, the major the major veil uh, once again. See anybody that's there? leading anybody that's leading is who Will's gonna pick halfway through the event. That's just that's what he does. Will Will Will's that's like, my oh, guy. is that the wagon? Is that the wagon? Is the band on this one? Oh let me jump on it. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know I you know Jordan Speed seems to have come into his own. I'm not a big Jordan Speed fan. 
as it relates to like who I'm looking to play. Do I enjoy his game and what he's done? Absolutely. But when it comes to like who I root for, you know, my pick, we're not going to talk about that, but I do think Jordan's playing at extremely high level. He's extremely comfortable. He's back with a style of game that that doesn't allow for swing thoughts. You know, I think a lot of us Americans, you just hit it high and try to hit it far. When you're playing overseas, you're playing a ground game. You're playing a lot of lower shots, running balls, and you can't really think so much of how to hit the shot. You just got to do the thing. So I think Jordan is back in a mindset where he can react to the visual stimuli of the moment. And I think he's going to play well because he's not worried about the X and O's and where the club is and where it's got to go to hit whatever shot shape he's trying so it's target golf out there and jordan's doing what the hell he's supposed to do so i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with jordan speed i heard a stat he hasn't lost uh when leading a 30 or two rounds in the 60s he's gone on to win the major um that he's played in only once as he failed so i'm gonna i'm gonna look for jordan speed to pull through this week all right hey listen last Good thing stuff, uh bro. will doug it's one to point this out to you, man. There's, uh, there's some, this underrated thing. I don't know if you guys are into astronomy or not, but there's this underrated thing. It's a star. It's called the sun. And it could do a lot of damage if you don't protect yourself when you're on a golf course. Man, dude, my hair is so, my, my head, I don't have hair. My head is so nasty. Like, my, my wife said to me, she gave me, you know, like those little stickies you get to get, like, stuff off your clothes? She's like, take the sticky and get it off your, like, you have flakes on your pillow. I, I can't, yeah. you, you go, I'm kicking you out of the bedroom. It's nasty. Yeah. You should have put on yeah. sunblock. Yeah. What's wrong I'm, with you? I'm, 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 I'm going to so, say this. I'm going to say this. I've been back. I left Monday morning. I've been back in Charlotte for four days. And now I just lick my lips because my, my, the sun have burned. <laughs> Right, it, 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 and it's, it is it is that bad, and I'm yeah. I'm just not getting the point. I'm not seeing the flakes on my nose anymore. So, I, I it was a different experience. <laughs> I, I, never, I never knew an African American. I always thought like, man, you know, we got the melon, cause we we won with the sun. No, I don't, I don't know if I'm won with the sun anymore like that. I'm telling you. We all learn the hard way. Well, look, man. Mike, it, to it, your it point, I don't know. Look, you can't zoom in the screen, but I look like, you know, I got this cheetah going on my forehead line. I, I wanted to go get a shape up a before bit. I came to see y'all today, but I was too it's afraid too of bad. them putting the clippers. You know what I'm saying? I was, too, I was like, That's you know, right. like, I'm not no, going to leave me a not real line up here. No. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no, you look good. You look good. Well, listen, man, uh, again, we, we had a lot of fun in Tahoe, but hanging out with y'all, getting to know y'all, um, and, and, you know, for at least, for me at least, coming on the Beyond the Fairway podcast uh, was, okay. was a treat. And so let's make this uh, let's make this a regular thing, man, you know? It's uh, mutual, brother. Us. It's all mutual. Another time. Same, man. Love y'all. Will Lowry, Doug Smith, <laughs> Beyond the Fairway podcast, NBC Sports. Make sure you guys all right, subscribe, fellas. rate it, and give it five stars. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.